Hello and welcome to another sketchbook video. This time I'm not going to just be playing around in my sketchbook. I'm going to be filling a page with clouds. I have several different art supplies here, which I'll talk you through in a moment. Firstly though, I'm going to be working in my new moleskin sketchbook, the one I bought just the other day that's in the art haul video. This one is going to be the one I use for more representational work. Whereas my other sketchbook, this one here, which is the same, but just black. Um, this is for color swatches and experiments and like mark making and trying different things out. So um, in this one, as I said, we're going to start by trying to fill one page with clouds. Now, these are going to be clouds in my style. They're not going to be hyper-realistic cloud paintings. I'm going to be using paint. Can you hear that fly? He stopped, okay. This is Japanese Gansai paint. I'm not sure whether I'm pronouncing that correctly, but um, this is a set of different shades of black. So we have reddish black, yellowish black, greenish black, bluish black, purplish black, which I think is the one I'm going to be using today and possibly the bluish black as well, um, and brownish black. They all look very dark when they're in the palette like this, but when I use them, um, let me see, have I got the little sample here somewhere? Ah, I have. This is from another video that's coming up, by the way. You're getting a sneak preview. Here's the little sample um, swatches I did. And so you can see they do actually look quite different when they are watered down. Anyway, Japanese Gansai paint is like their equivalent to our watercolour paint. And it's kind of slightly more opaque. So I would say it's a kind of cross between watercolour and gouache. You can layer it and it's much more opaque or you can water it down and it becomes more transparent as I did with those swatches. Um, so it'll be interesting to um, paint some clouds with this. Uh, we have one of my favourite gouache paints in Payne's Grey and a Daniel Smith watercolour paint in Indigo. And then I have a selection of different greys and blues um, and lovely sepia tones and there's a violet tone there as well. Um, Luminance Pencils by Karen Dash. And we have a white pencil too. This is the one I forgot to review in the art haul video. So I'm going to let you know a little bit about this pencil. A little giveaway is the fact that it is much shorter than it was when I bought it already. So I'll be telling you about that. Um, I also have a beautiful apricot pencil here because I thought that might be nice to add a bit of contrast. Right, the first thing we are going to do is paint. I can find my lovely, this is a Pro Art Proline um, Series 101 round brush. I love this brush, it's a number seven and it's good for painting clouds because can get a lot of water loaded onto the brush. This paint is very highly pigmented, so I don't actually need that much on the brush. Right, we will start here and just do a lovely simple cloud shape. I mean, you're welcome to draw or paint along with me. As some of you said you were doing that in the previous videos. I thought that was so nice. I love that thought that you're sitting there watching or listening to me and working in your own sketchbooks. So let me know if you're doing that. Right, I'm kind of watering this down a little. I don't want to make it too watery in the sketchbook though because the paper does seem to buckle a little bit. Um, right, let's just give it a nice heavy looking bottom. I also would like, this is a little 
technique I sometimes use just to get a bit of kitchen paper and just blot it slightly and it creates some interesting effects as it lifts the paint off the paper so while it's still wet just tab it like that and that looks rather nice I actually want to get a smaller brush and it's just I'm sorry I often do this is completely turn the painting around if you can hear background noises by the way it's because they're all working on the renovations of the house downstairs and it's directly beneath my studio. Well, actually I'm on the second floor and they're on the ground floor. So there is a floor between us, but um, I can still hear everything that's going on when they're like drilling or knocking. <laughs> And that might come through a little bit. So I'm fussing with this far more than I normally fuss, but that's quite a cute little cloud. I think we will leave him like that. Um, next one, shall I try? Uh, let's choose one of these pencils. I wish this would lay flat. It's a bit difficult getting it to lay flat when they're new. Um, right, let's have a look. Shall we start with, shall we start with a Payne's Grey? I really love Payne's Grey, as you can tell from the paint as well. Let's, ooh, 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 man overboard. Right, let's just do, I wonder whether to do them slightly, let's see. I haven't really tried clouds in pencil. You see, this is where I get a bit scared because I'm like, I'm trying something new. I want this sketchbook to not be like a crazy mess. This one, I want it to have some uh, <laughs> structure to it. I don't know whether that's the right term. Um, let's just try and lightly sketch a little cloud. Let's do the outline first. I mean, this is real experimentation for me because I don't usually use colored pencils to draw flowers. I'm just gonna move that out of the way so we have a little bit more space. It's a bit more comfortable. I'm just gonna see if I press, let's see if I press hard. And then light, we can get something interesting happening. Somebody recommended a pencil sharpener to me. Um, her name is Carly Amanda Art. I think that's her name on YouTube. I know her from um, Instagram mainly. But she's recently started a YouTube channel and she works in colored pencils for her amazing animal portraits. And she suggested to me a special um, pencil sharpener that gets the most amazing fine point um, on your pencils. So I have ordered it from Jackson's Art. I needed to order some paper from them anyway. I've been experimenting with the new paper. Um, and I realized it's good for some things, the Archer's paper that was in the hall, by the way. Um, but I realised I need some slightly thicker paper. We'll talk about papers another time because that's a whole other topic. And um, I don't want to get sidetracked too much from what we're doing here today. But I do like how these are just really chatty videos. Just like sitting here with you, drawing and having a chat. Um, but I could go off on a million different tangents about so many different things and I actually feel then I don't talk about what I really would like to talk about, <laughs> which is kind of what I'm doing here and my thoughts on what I'm working on. Um, anyway, yes, Carly Amanda 
recommended a pencil sharpener I will show it to you when this Jackson's order comes I will do another art haul it will be smaller than the other one obviously um, but I have ordered a few Holbein acrylic paints that they had back in stock I wanted to order them last time I placed an order but they didn't have them in stock um, so I've ordered some of those I've ordered three more luminance pencils um, some paper and this amazing pencil sharpener which is the most money I have ever spent on a pencil sharpener in my life and I never thought I would spend this on a pencil sharpener but it seemed to work so incredibly well and I thought if anyone is in a position to recommend it to me it's Carly. <laughs> so yeah, I'm hoping that I can get a better point on these pencils once I have that. Let's give this white pencil a go. This is the pencil. Can you see that clearly? Um, it's already really short because let, let's compare it to I think it was about the length of the luminance pencils when I bought it last week and it's a real little we'll call it a rascal shall we because oh look it goes over the top of that though <laughs> um, the lead keeps breaking I don't know whether I've got like just a faulty one or something but I needed to get a better point on it so I sharpened it for the first time and the lid just kept breaking and breaking and breaking and I ended up with a pencil this long and I'd barely used it. Oh I quite like the slightly waxy look that it's giving this cloud over the top of there. I mean that's quite that's quite nice it's quite a nice effect. I mean, it's not like super white though is it and it's meant to draw on paper glass plastic and metal so I kind of feel like it's one of these ones that's meant to go over anything and actually it's um it's really just toning down the paint's gray a little bit I'm gonna try and be a bit firmer let's see this is experimental here so I don't know how this cloud is gonna turn out but You watch, I'll go too far in a minute and then I'll go, oh no, I don't like it. Like I said earlier, these clouds are very much just in my own style, so they're not super realistic. And I would really like to have a go at working from some photos of clouds. So I think that might be coming up in another video. One thing I love about working in my sketchbook like this is that it truly is experimental and I never really know um, what's going to happen, which new techniques I'm going to discover or what I'm going to hit upon that I really like. I mean obviously there'll be some things I don't like, some things I do and that's okay. It's just that I wanted to make this sketchbook a little bit less chaotic. The other one is really my chaotic sketchbook where I just do a little bit of everything and whatever I fancy. And I wanted to really develop different ideas in this one. They look, I think they look a bit like mountains rather than clouds, but maybe that's okay as well. French grey. French grey is rather lovely, so let's just let's just see if we oh no. No, I think that looks too brown, doesn't it? No 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 no. White pencil to the rescue. Actually it's looking a bit dirty. Let's give a little bit of paper and just get rid of the dirty blend that out a bit. It's funny because I had an idea of how this page would look and it's already totally different to how I imagined it would look. So 
So there we go. I guess I could also do some raindrops, couldn't I? For those of you who don't know my normal cloud paintings, I actually have one over here on the desk. This one needs to have its details added. I normally put lots of little details in the raindrops and sometimes a few on the cloud as well. It just depends. Um, sometimes I leave the clouds like this. But this was painted in this paint, this Payne's Grey gouache. And uh, yeah, it's just one, one shade of paint. Um, but I've watered it down for some of the raindrops and I've used it um, a little bit more thickly. Um, you know what I mean, for some of the others. So you get this nice variation. But yeah, this is what my cloud paintings will often look like. So this is real experimentation in this sketchbook. Um, yeah, I'm actually liking the white over the top. Let's do it like this, in like a circular motion. And it's covering and sort of blending as well that lovely... Um, was it we used violet grey, wasn't it? Violet grey luminance pencil. Shall we get the Carandash Neo Colour and see whether we can add? Can we add? Oh no, it's not going to add because that waxy pencil has already been there before. Maybe, should we just leave that one as it is? I'm wondering. We've got this gorgeous colour, salmon. Will that do anything? Oh, very, very slightly. Let's get the Daniel Smith indigo paint. Um, we need a palette as well. I haven't left myself much space on this desk. I've got things all over the desk at the moment. Okay, let's get this palette, it's a bit dusty. <laughs> let's just get rid of that. And just the smallest amount. Oh, it's coming out of the tube. Oh, over there. Which I need to, do I need to turn that? No, actually that will be okay. Um, right, I'm going to get this brush and then I'm going to just this is the most beautiful colour. Daniel Smith Indigo is one of my favourite colours. Right. Do you know, I'm just going to add, it would be fun to add a few little, and these are like the lines I would use uh, for my clouds, for the raindrops. We're just going to have a little play around. I mean, they're not meant to be coming down from those clouds. This is purely filling the page with just different experiments. And sometimes if you keep going, you get a little bit fainter, and a little bit fainter if you don't reload the brush with paint. So nice. I've had an idea, by the way. I remembered that, that lovely dark indigo Faber-Castell pen, the brush pen that I bought in um, my last Jackson's Art order and it was featured in the hall. I think this would be great for this page. So I'm just going to go and get it. This one. Okay, so what should we do with it? Should we just try to draw some lines? 
let's try and draw see how it works for lines oh it's harder to control than my paintbrush but that's kind of lovely we're getting um, a variation in the width of the line it's quite difficult to do these sort of vertical lines but because I want them to be like rain well, that's what I'm having to do I think it would be more well it would be easier to go horizontally I think but that there's something really lovely about that the kind of slightly less perfect look let's try a few tiny oh look at that it makes naturally makes oops that one went a bit funny it naturally makes a little raindrop shape can you see that some of them are more successful raindrop shapes than others look at that could just keep going let's keep going <laughs> it's very hard for me as somebody who naturally paints rather than draws I mean I know I've done a little bit of painting here but it's not the way I would normally paint I wouldn't normally paint on this type of paper I would normally use like a heavier um, lightly textured watercolour paper so I'm kind of used to how that takes the paint whereas this is really different yeah I wanted to say that it's difficult for me as somebody who paints in quite a precise way to allow myself to really experiment like this where I feel like I think these are beautiful marks by the way where I feel like this is totally not something I would have shown you. I would consider it to be just like playing around and doodling. I mean, obviously it's not like a proper work of art, which is what you would normally see me working on, um, on this channel. And I kind of feel I'm trying to get over that slight embarrassment of, you might look at this and think, gosh, she's a really bad artist. Um, <laughs> It's, it's tricky. I don't know how I get over that. I guess just by doing it and sharing and uh, eventually it will feel, I'm going to just add one more down here. It will feel a little bit easier. Um, I'm loving doing this. It is so much fun and just sharing like the process with you and just playing around. But um, if you want to see my usual work, go back and look at my other videos or go to my website or my Instagram and you will see the work I'm capable of producing. Whereas this, I'm just playing around and having fun. Um, right, I think this little cloud is dry. So what should we put over the top? Let's, let's just get, I mean, this is a gorgeous color. Ice blue, it's called. Shall we try and just see if we, what happens if we do this? I just want to see how this shows up over the paint when I layer it. So I'm at a slightly funny angle because I don't want to smudge what I've done underneath. quite cute. I feel like this little cloud should have some rain coming down. Should we add some? Should we just do it like... Do it like... This would be good experimenting with the pencil, won't it? Like a heavy sheet of rain. like it's raining onto the one below. God, this is a super stormy storm cloud. Mega storm. 
think he's angry. He's angry and he's dropping all of his really heavy rain. <laughs> Ooh, that looks a bit crazy. Um, right. Okay. I'm actually quite liking. Let me have a look on the screen. Sorry, that was the chair making a weird noise. I don't know what I'm doing here. I just thought it might look interesting. Hmm. I'm bringing out the Neo colours. See, I didn't know I was going to be working with these at the beginning. Or oh, the brush pen. <laughs> I really just want to see how I can layer all of these different materials. I mean, some things are going to work and some things perhaps aren't, or they're not going to be quite as good. I'm not going to like the effect, but it's okay. I quite like how you can kind of knock it back a bit if you do something that you don't necessarily like all that much or you don't think works. Hmm. I think we're going to have to wrap this up in a minute. I don't know whether it's still a little bit of white. Oh yeah. I kind of like these slightly rougher marks. Let's just blend that in a bit. Sorry if I'm shaking the camera. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, just. If it's gonna darken it slightly under there. top of there. Let's hope it dries. <laughs> I mean I really don't know where I'm going with this. I'm just truly experimenting to see how things look and what I can do. I kind of feel like this little one. Should we give him, let's give him some. Some little raindrops. After all, he looks very dark and like he would be about to drop some serious rain. Right, shall we just do something down here? I feel like we need to fill it in a little bit more. Um, I wonder whether, because that was such a lovely colour and I've covered it up. Let's get this. Get the big brush. Get the purplish black. Just do some really loose lovely little clouds just to fill it in. Push the paint around a little bit. You know what 
I think I might do is just add And then I think we're going to leave it for today. So there we go. A very imperfect page of clouds and raindrops and just pure experimentation. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give it a thumbs up and let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you again soon in the next video.